Welcome to the broadcast of the Singer of Shanghai. This radio theater play of sewing and survival has been written and performed by graduate students in the Arts and Entertainment Administration program at Valparaiso University. Kayla Owens, Kaylee Perrin, and Christian Yoder, under the direction of Professors Carrie Ann Innes and Kevin Ostoyich. We are honored to have the following special guest stars: Jacob Innes as the SA Man, Danny Spungen of the Florence and Lawrence Spungen Family Foundation as the Travel Agent. Former Shanghai Jewish refugee Eric Kish as the magistrate, former Shanghai Jewish refugee Bert Reiner as the American GI, former Shanghai Jewish refugee Gary Sternberg as the guide in Frickhofen, and former Shanghai Jewish refugee Harry J. Abraham as his grandfather Berthold Rosenthal. The students and professors of the course wish to dedicate this play to the memory of the following former Shanghai Jewish refugees: Harry Katz, Fanny Hein Kellner. And Ida Rosenthal Abraham. They also wish to dedicate this play to the memory of Donald Matthew Pasco, who passed away on January second, two thousand nineteen. Donald was a true gentleman and scholar. Listen now, as the young woman Rose enters the office of Harry J. Abraham in order to interview him about his refugee experience in Shanghai. I'm Laura, Mr. Abraham's assistant. He's waiting for you. Please follow me, Mr. Abraham. Rose is here for your interview. Hello, Rose. I hope you didn't have a hard time finding my office. No, not at all, Mr. Abraham. Please call me Harry. We'll do, Harry. I just want to say that I've been looking forward to our interview. You, your past—it intrigues me. Not many people know of the Shanghai Jewish refugees. It's not only my story; it's my mother's. She's the reason I'm alive today. Wait, before we go on, I'd like to set up my phone to record. Sure. While you're getting set up,、uh, should I have Laura bring us some water? Yes, please. Laura,、uh, two waters, please. Okay. Looks like we're set to go. I have a number of questions here, and at any time, if you feel uncomfortable, perhaps at an uncomfortable question, if you wish, you don't have to answer it. First question: Could you please state your name, birthday, and a brief introduction? Okay, my name is Harry J. Abraham. I was born on March fifteenth, nineteen thirty-eight. I am one of about twenty thousand Jews who were able to escape from the Nazis to Shanghai, China. This was thanks to my mother. She's the one that helped our family leave Germany after Kristallnacht. Could you tell me more about your parents and about Kristallnacht? Yes. Well. Excuse me, Mr. Abraham. I have your what? Oh my goodness! I apologize. I wonder what I could have tripped over. I'll clean it up right away. I'll bring two new glasses once I'm done. No, no, no problem. No problem. Accidents happen. November ninth, nineteen thirty-eight. Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. In the little town that I was born in, Frickhofen. Which is about sixty kilometers from Frankfurt. The Nazis threw bricks through all the windows. As I've been told, I lay beneath the window in the first house they attacked, and glass shattered all over me. My mother was there with me, and she picked me up. And luckily, the glass didn't hurt me. Oh, hey! There's glass all over you. Please be okay. Please be okay. Oh, thank goodness! It looks like none of it cut you.
clarify, Kristallnacht was a planned attack on all Jews by the Nazi regime? Yes. And in fact, Hitler ordered that stormtroopers attack in towns they didn't live in. Most Nazis had grown up with the Jews, and he didn't want them to hesitate. He didn't want them to have that emotional connection. The milk! You've knocked over the baby's milk! Where is your husband? Where is the man of the house? He's not here. He's away. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Let's go. We'll be back. The milk! You spilled the milk! Shh, shh, it's okay, it's okay. And what about your father? My father was a middleman who bought and sold cows. He was in the town that he was born in, Altenkirchen. And that night, about 20 kilometers from my town, all the Jewish people, including my father, were taken to the Marktplatz, the center of the town. My uncle, Siegfried, was arrested in Frickhofen, and they were both taken to Buchenwald. A concentration camp, correct? Yes, the concentration camp. What was it like? Well, I wasn't there, but I've been told that Buchenwald was a dirty, terrible place with, uh, at the time, uh, 40,000 prisoners. It was a big place, um, absolutely empty and surrounded by wire fences and watchtowers. Um, I was told also during the first weeks of its opening, seven people tried to escape. They were caught by Nazi soldiers and shot. Can you believe that? <coughs> seven innocent people killed just like that. They only wanted freedom. We only wanted freedom. But your father and uncle, were they able to escape? Yes, with the help of my mother. You see, my grandfather, my mother's father, was in the German Navy in the First World War. My grandfather told my mother that he had heard of places you could go if you had tickets to get on a ship. And the only place left open was Shanghai. So my mother, with that information, found two tickets from Frankfurt. Excuse me, pardon me. I'm trying to get off. I need to go to the magistrate's office. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you tell me where the magistrate's office is? Sure. You see that sign over there? Follow that sign, go up the stairs and walk for about a block, then you should see the office. Thank you. You've been a big help. Bless you. Good day, ma'am. How can I help you? Good afternoon, sir. I would like to get passports for my husband, Albrecht Abraham, and my brother, Siegfried Rosenthal. Jewish? Are they in a concentration camp? Buchenwald. I'm sorry. I can't help you. But I was told that if I could get passports to Shanghai, they would be let go. Do you have assurances? Assurances? From the steamship company, saying they'll sell you passage to Shanghai. Then you come here to City Hall with assurances for your passports. Please help me. I spent countless hours back and forth between Frickhofen, Limburg an der Lahn, and Frankfurt. Then you go back to the agent to convert your assurances to tickets. I've been trying for weeks. My father served in the German Navy. He has friends, money, anything. And then the government sends your paperwork to Buchenwald. Thank you. You've been a big help. Once they're released, you will have four weeks to get them out of the country. Go back, they go. And she was able to help your uncle and father get to Shanghai, wasn't she? Yes. In January of 1939, they left Buchenwald and took the train to Genoa. From Genoa, on board the Conte Bianca Manu, they went through the Suez Canal onto Shanghai. It must have been hard for her to get those tickets. After Kristallnacht, the Jews were cut off from many resources. Yes, and that was something that my mother could never get over. She never understood how people could deprive me and her of food. 
She went out on the streets crying. How am I supposed to get milk for my son? A member of the SA, one of Hitler's stormtroopers, stopped her. A Jew kid doesn't need to guzzle milk. It's okay, it's okay. A woman helped her. Ida, come here, inside the door. Shh, be quiet. I will help you, but you must promise to never say you are here. You will forget this whole thing, because if anybody knows that I helped someone who was Jewish, it could mean the imprisonment of my family. Here, go out the back door. See that wall? I'll leave a bottle of milk on that wall in the back of the yard each morning before dawn. That really affected her. I was only a baby. What was your mother like before Crystal left? Well, I, I didn't know her, you know, beforehand, but in talking with my uncle and others, uh, they said that she was a whole different person. Apparently she was easygoing, in fact. Do you believe that Crystal Knock changed her? I do. That night changed everybody. Nobody trusted anyone anymore, and my mother especially became hard, tough, and difficult. You know, after she got the tickets for her brother and my father, she got four more for me, herself, and her parents. But they didn't want to go. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm trying to get off. I need to go to the travel office. Good morning, ma'am. How may I assist you today? I need tickets to Shanghai. I only had the funds earlier to get two for my husband and brother. Now I need to get tickets for the rest of my family. I was hoping to be able to get four, one for each of my parents, one for my son, and one for myself. Oh, the price. The price has gone up. But you gave me assurances. There are others waiting that could pay much more than this. You gave me assurances at the lower price. Please, I don't have a lot of money. Do you still want the tickets? Albrecht and Siegfried are in Shanghai already. They're waiting for us. My father was in the German Navy. He has friends, money, anything. Remember, once you get these, you have four weeks to get out of the country. Yes, I remember all too well. Mom, Dad. Here are your tickets. I have mine and Harry's in my coat pocket. Shotzi, we, we're not going. Not going? What do you mean not going? Ida, we aren't going. We want to stay here. You have to come with us. I don't want to think about what could happen to you if you stay here. They didn't want to go? Even though they knew what was happening to the Jews? Well, you have to understand, my grandfather had served in the German Navy, and Frickhofen was their home. So they thought they would be okay? Yes. But even they weren't safe from the Nazis. What happened to them? <sighs> my grandfather was forced into hard labor, and because of that, suffered very much from malnutrition and exhaustion. He died from a ruptured appendix. And your grandmother? She lived for about two years in a Jewish home with 12 other women, but eventually they were shipped off to Auschwitz. There, all of them, including my grandmother, were killed. Your mother did her best to keep you all together. It seems like she was a great role model for you. Of course. Not only for me, but for others as well. What do you mean? Well, let me put it this way. My mother was a great seamstress. She learned how to sew when she was very young from her mother and grandmother. In fact, see that machine over there? That was her sewing machine. This is her original sewing machine? Yes, it is. After Kristallnacht, when she was gathering the materials for us to leave for Shanghai, she made it a priority to bring that singer along with us. Jews in Shanghai didn't have much. We were forced to give up most of our possessions, even our clothes. Sewing. 
She loved to sew. She taught young people in Shanghai how to sew. Here's a good one for you. When people no longer had clothes, women made blouses out of... My mother and women in Shanghai shared similar talents. She could recreate an old blouse into something new and different. Ah, but, but these women could make dresses out of parachute material. Wow. Your mother was an amazing woman. She went through so much, but still found it necessary to help others. That was important to her. Though Kristallnacht really had an impact on who she was, this was the one thing that kept her mind at ease. As I said, she just loved to sew. Can you hand me the pincushion, please? What are we gonna do about this area in the back? It's looking a little scarce. Right now, I just need to pin the bodice closed so I can remember to sew it up. We can't have the young woman giving a peep show at the Shanghai Jewish Youth Association. I'm amazed anyone is still having dances these days. I couldn't agree with you more. Dances are a time for celebration. What is there to celebrate here? I mean, think about it. Wouldn't you want to celebrate something even if this is not how you want it to be? Instead of celebrating nothing at all? At least some people will have good memories when they leave Shanghai. Now, help me figure out what we're going to do with the rest of the dress. Hmm, let's see. Well, the dress is coming together quite nicely, Ida, but what if we reconstructed the bodice and took some material from there and added it to the gown? No, no, we can't do that. Then she would have less coverage at the bodice and, trust me, that would not work for a modest Jewish family like hers. I know what to do. Come help me get it from the kitchen. Albrecht brought this home yesterday and I felt the need to keep it for something useful. And I was right. What on earth is this? And it has a huge mud stain on it. If you'd use your imagination, this dirty old parachute will complete the two layers of draping on her gown that we need. You still haven't answered my question about the giant mud stain at the center of it. Oh, that's nothing a good old wash can't get out. Have some faith in my abilities. She won't even be able to tell what this material is because it will be hidden under the first layer we already have. Just wait and see. You may not know this about me, but I was taught by the best. And who exactly is that? My grandmother. You see that sewing machine we've been using this whole time to make the dress? Yes. Well, she taught me everything I know, and I couldn't just leave it when we were fleeing to Shanghai. I would feel as if I were leaving a part of me behind. It keeps me connected to my grandmother, and now I want to use this same piece of machinery to bring this dress together. Oh, excuse me. I have to take this. Yes. Well, I am actually in the middle of the interview as we speak. Okay, I'll check my email when I hang up. <laughs> What's so funny, Harry? Oh, that. Yeah, I get a lot of notifications throughout the day. But that's the only way I know when I get a new message so I can check it immediately. This generation and their technology. I tell you, you wouldn't have lasted a week back in my day. Picture it. You're a young child in a very unfamiliar place. You can't go back home because it's being torn down from top to bottom. You couldn't bring your toys. Just the bare necessities of that. So what do you do to have fun? Well, you make something out of absolutely nothing. That's what you do. The year is 1943. The date February 18th. You're playing outside when you see a flyer posted on a pole about a new proclamation issued by the Japanese. All stateless refugees that entered Shanghai after 1937, in other words, the Jews, have to move into a designated area in Hongqiu with all of the poorest of the Chinese. All this time, Shanghai is occupied by Japan, allies to Germany. Life in Shanghai was good at first. It, it wasn't the French concession where people had a lot of space, made a fairly good living and didn't face a lot of oppression, but we made the best of it. And you have to remember, I wasn't the only kid there. I had, I had friends. Let's see if I can remember the names. Um, there was Ivy and Ellen. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ivy and Ellen. Ivy and Ellen, yeah. I don't know, it isn't much. 
but it's a place to live, you know? Even though it has a lot of people living in such a small space. I miss where we lived before the Japanese said we had to live here. It isn't anything like the fancy house I used to live in on the other side of the bridge. Do you think the Japanese knew it was mean? I don't think they did. The Germans made them do it. Do you have a lot of people living in your house like I do? Yes, but everyone is in my family, so I guess that helps a little bit. Do you like where you live? It's hard having to share sinks and toilets and the little bugs in our beds and rice are annoying. How are you liking it? It's getting better. When we first moved here, I heard a lot of people complaining that the designated area was just a found out, burned out place. Is your family having a hard time living there? There are a lot of families living in my house and the rooms are divided by curtains. Yeah, it's not the cleanest place to live. There are a lot of people living in my house. Three floors aren't as big as you think. The first floor is a giant bedroom and a small bedroom in the corner that is mine. The next floor is where my aunt, uncle, uncle's cousins, and grandpa sleep. The next floor is for my uncle, aunt, and my cousin. And the outhouse is a little room above that. We don't have an outhouse. We have to use honey buckets. The smell is horrible because so many people are using them. Ew, honey buckets. Why do they call them that? That smell of them is so gross and nasty. I feel bad for the people who empty them every day. What a crappy job. Do you get tired of eating beans? There are so many beans in my house that other people ask me, what color did you have last night? Knowing it was one color of bean, purple, brown, black, white, or yellow. Were you able to bring any toys or anything with you? I couldn't bring my teddy bear with me and I miss him a lot. I don't have any kind of toys. Not a doll, not a teddy bear. I never learned how to ride a bicycle even. What do you play with then? Sometimes I play this game with marbles that I learned from my friends and my family also play Shanghai Millionaire sometimes. That sounds fun. I wish I knew how to play. Do you think we could play? I don't want to be sad anymore. Sure, I can teach you. My marbles aren't the prettiest, but they're still fun and special to me. Can I play with this one? I like the color. I like that one too. It's my favorite. Put your marble on the ground like this and flick it and try to hit another marble. Don't we need more people to play? No, we can play with just the two of us. Sometimes play people play with four or five shooting the marbles, but we don't need that many. Hey, have you heard of packs? I've seen some of the boys play that. Is that the game with the cigarette packs that you fold and throw at each other? They seem to have fun playing it, but they never let me play. I guess some of the packs are collectibles. I don't want to see what's collectible about a folded cigarette pack. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like we enjoyed every second of our time there, nor were we always happy. But what were we to do? Sit around and sulk? That wasn't an option. So we didn't have a choice but to use our imagination. Now, everything that you hold near and dear is on your phone, right? For the most part, yeah. I keep all my passwords on my notes apps, all my family photos. Right. See, if, if your phone were to stop working right now, you'd have a heart attack, wouldn't you? I'll give you that one, Harry. I will say that my phone has definitely become part of my daily life. But I didn't always have this small rectangular piece of metal and glass to keep me entertained. Please, enlighten me. Hmm, let me see. Some of my favorites were Simon Says, Kickball, oh, definitely Dodgeball. Dodgeball could get real violent. I've gotten hit in the face a few times. That was not fun to say the least. <laughs> Uh, I don't know many people getting hit in the face by accident, uh, even if it's just a game. But um, on a serious note, though, uh, there weren't many activities in school outside of racing and soccer. When school was over, we, we went home. Are there any other moments you can remember when you were in school? Ah, oh, definitely, definitely. Um, for example, I'll never forget this. All right, what happened? Well, um, it was later. After the war was over, everyone was distracted thinking about getting out of Shanghai. The teacher would walk up and down the aisle and warn you when you had to take a test. 
but I, I couldn't concentrate. Um, I never forget, uh, he had a ruler behind his back and he gave me a whack across my knuckles and I can still feel it now. And I hid my hands behind my back when I went home and my mother was wondering what I was doing. So I showed her and it was all red. And of course he didn't lie to my mother, especially my mother. She was tough. Harry, is that you? Yes, ma'am. Well, come in here and let me see you. What are you hiding for? How was school? It, it was okay. Um, we hit a we hit a test in in history class today. Just okay. How'd you do? I um I, I think I did pretty good, but. But what? What are you rubbing your hand like that for? <laughs> Well, well, the teacher hit me on the hand real hard in class, and it still hurts. What happened this time? Well, he he hadn't passed out all the tests out yet, and and I, I so I thought it was okay to keep talking until he was finished. But he can he came over and he told me to hold out my hand, and he popped me with the ruler. Let me see your hand. <laughs> see, see, it's it's still red. Maybe he didn't hit you hard enough. Whoa. Your mother did not play. She meant business. Education was very important to my mother. What are you going to do when we get to America? Do you want to be behind all of the other children? We're moving to America? When the quotas come through, your father has a cousin that will sponsor us. The quotas? That, that could take years then you will have plenty of time to work on those marks in school. What do you want to be when you are grown up in America? I, I, I don't know, a, a businessman like Papa or an engineer? You want to be like your father? Selling tin cans to the Chinese to make rain spouts? Sure, L look at all those bags of money Pa's made. We're Shanghai millionaires. <laughs> yes, but with inflation, it's not worth the money it's printed on. Kindling for the stove. What will you do in America? Well, I'll sew, of course, on my Singer sewing machine. What, what are you sewing now? A jacket for you, out of my old ski pants. I don't need them in Shanghai. Here, try it on. Wow! American badges! And a soldier's hat! Where did you get these? Wait, Mom, you put the buttons on the wrong side. You think I'm a girl. <laughs> you look like a man, sweetheart. I look like a G.I. You look like a G.I., my friend. I'm going to go show all the kids. Are you kids playing? Hey, you're the soldier that gave us candy in my English class. Yes, I am. And what is your name? My name is Ellen, sir. Well, it's nice to meet you, young lady. What do you girls have there? It's a game called marbles. Hmm, I see. Have you ever played baseball? Nope. You've never played baseball before? Not even your own version? No, sir. I've seen a few soldiers playing around here, and I enjoy watching them play. It looks like so much fun when one soldier would hit it, and the ball you could hear it echo and watch it soar through the sky and land in the trees. Well, Ellen, today is your lucky day. I'm going to show you how to play my country's favorite pastime. But we don't have any balls or bats. Don't you worry about that. My boys and I have plenty. We'll be pros in no time. Now I bet the boys will let me play. Look over there. 
Who's that? It looks like Harry. What's he wearing? That jacket makes him look like a GI. Hey Harry, over here, we're playing baseball. You buy everything secondhand that's true. And you leave the fighting for the others to do. You look just like a GI, my friend. Yet you were never in the thick of it, my friend. Only Jews and Hong Q know the score. A professional immigrant and nothing more. You look just like a GI, my friend. A GI, my immigrant friend. My mother was tough, hard-nosed, and sometimes difficult. But that difficulty was what created the ability to accomplish what she accomplished. Did I tell you about a trip we took back to Germany to check on the graves of my family members and to see if they were being attended to? No. Tell me. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for the graves of my parents, Bertolt and Mina. Would you be able to help me? Sure. What did you say your parents' names were? Berthold and Mina Rosenthal. They should be over here along this wall. Follow me this way. They are buried over there in the Jewish cemetery. The graves aren't the easiest to find. Some of the tombstones are missing. Ah, here they are. I'll let you have a moment with your parents. Come back to the entrance when you're ready to go. Thank you. Mother and father, I miss you both dearly. I wish you could see everything we've been through. There's so much I wish I could tell you. I wish you would have come with us to Shanghai. I wish I would have known when you told me you weren't coming that you were signing your own death sentences. I would have thanked you more for everything you did for our family. That moment weighs heavily on my mind and will for the rest of my life. I wish you could see how tough I've become through all of this. Everything you and grandmother taught me has served me well. I can't thank you enough. All I hope for is that a hard work ethic and determined mindset will get them anywhere. I can see so much of myself in Harry. What else can you tell me? I have a lot of questions, but sometimes I forget to ask the most important ones. During the trip, I had an encounter with some of my father's friends. How did that go? I'll tell you a story. I sat in the room in Altenkirchen, in the room with people who grew up with my father. They were sitting on the couch, just sitting there right on the couch. Now, I was, I was asked before I came by the, um, uh, I have the paper, <coughs> the German newspaper. I'll send you a copy if you're interested. So I was handed this questionnaire. You know, they, they wanted to ask certain questions. They said, if you feel uncomfortable talking about anything, you let us know. And I said, no, no, no. But can I ask you questions? If you feel uncomfortable in terms of me asking you questions, then you'll tell me. No, they said you could ask uh, whatever you want. I said, fine. So they brought these people in. These people, they grew, they grew up with my father. And as I started to ask them questions, they started to cry. They were crying. They said, We didn't know anything about this. Because you want to know what I asked then? I said, how could you let my father go to Buchenwald? How? You were there. What did you do about it? This one said, he was my best friend. I knew him as a Jew, but he was my best friend. Then how could you let him go? And these were people in the town that knew my father that were allowing this to happen. A simple question. They had no answer for me. 
They didn't understand. But they started to cry. I mean, they lived together. They grew up together. They played together, went to school together. You know, that's what they said before that. That stopped after I asked my questions. And that's even the point today, ignoring reality in some ways. Because if that would have been recognized and reacted to at the time, we wouldn't be talking about the Shanghai Jews or the Holocaust or anything. There has to be something that you can see through, that people are just looking, overlooking, because it keeps continuing to come up. It just keeps continuing to come up. I think even now that things are happening in the world and people are just ignoring it. They're just standing by and not really doing anything about it, you know? <coughs> I'm seeing this repeated now. <coughs> On the world stage, just a few years after all this happened. <coughs> but, but wait, I'd like to ask you a question. Of course. Go ahead, Harry. Why do you care? I mean, why do you care about our history? In this case of the Shanghai Jews, what could it possibly leave as, as a memory for the future? This happened so long ago. It's small, 20,000 Jews, and it's so far away. It's really insignificant on the, the world stage. It didn't really create anything. You know, in terms of making history, as far as the development and so on. So, so why would somebody even begin to think about it? I, I understand where you're coming from, Harry. And I can understand why you're confused about my interests. But the thing is, your history, the history of the Shanghai Jews is not insignificant. 20,000 people escaping death is not insignificant. It's just like you explained with Crystal Knot. Something like that should never, ever happen again. I want to learn about your story and tell it, Harry, so that I can help you in making sure nothing like Crystal Knock ever happens again. Which house was yours again? It's that one. See the upstairs? We used to rent the second floor. This was one of the first houses to be raided in Kristallnacht, wasn't it? Yes. See the window on the right? On the night of Kristallnacht, my precious Harry, who was only an infant at the time, was sleeping under that window when a rock was thrown through it, shattering glass all over my sleeping baby. Do you know what my biggest concern was in that moment out of everything that happened? Even bigger than my Albrecht being sent to Buchenwald? What's that? Why couldn't I get milk for my son? Why did the Nazis refuse us food? Ida? Ida Abraham, is that you? I'm Ida. Who are you? I put the milk on the wall over there in the back of the yard. It's you? It's really you? This is my son. This is Harry. Harry, this is the woman that saved your life. They embraced. You have to remember that even in a story like this, there were some good people. Why was my family imprisoned? I'm so sorry, Ida, Harry. Why did everyone shut us Jews out? Why was Shanghai the only place for us to go? I'm so sorry. Why? 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 Uh, um. <coughs> I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, <coughs> I need to get some water. We can take as long as you need. I, I hope I didn't upset him. Rose, it's Laura. Oh, hello again. Please come and have a seat next to me. I could overhear you from the other room. I want to say that even though Mr. Abraham can get worked up talking about his past, just know that this really means a lot to him. Knowing that people care about Kristallnacht, about Shanghai, about his mother, 
people aren't normally interested in this kind of stuff. Of course. I mean, these interviews are the least I could do. I think that if people hear these stories, especially from refugees themselves, they will start to see how the Holocaust and Nazis affected these people's lives. I agree. I know your interview is coming to a close, but I wanted to make sure you got a good look at Ida's sewing machine before you left. I overheard Harry mention it to you earlier. Yes, he did. It's remarkable he has it with him still. I know, right? I also think it's amazing how intact this thing is. It's a bit dingy and matted from years of wear and tear, but with a good old polish, I'm sure this thing could look brand new. I think it's unpolished state says something about the machine and about Harry and Ida's lives. With everything they experienced, they made it through together. Beautiful, isn't she? I figure I'd show it to Rose while you grab some water. How are you feeling, Miss Abraham? I'm I'm fine. I'm a little tired. Yes, but 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 fine. Thank you, Lar. Wow. This machine holds so many amazing stories. I keep this in my office in memory of my mother and the perseverance she showed. It inspires me every day. I'm happy you could share some of those stories with me. Oh, there are plenty more. There's one thing that you should keep in mind, Rose. Shanghai was just a part of my life. Just a part. I just want to remind you and everyone else studying this history that it's important to go past Shanghai. The refugee story doesn't end there. Those of us who survive have lived the rest of our lives as normally as we can. But then again, occasionally something happens and it reminds us of those times. It's important that we look out for one another now more than ever. Would you be willing to tell me more of your life? I mean, after Shanghai? Yes, of, of course. Um, we could meet again. Yes. When would you be free? How about same time next week? Okay. That works. Good. And then I can tell you about my mother's adventures in the United States behind the wheel. Behind the wheel? Oh, she loved cars. And I can tell you about her beautiful red cutlass and her working at Sears Roebuck in charge of slipcovers. Oh, oh, and I need to tell you about the time I criticized her driving at an intersection and she just got right out of the car, leaving me right in the middle of that intersection. <laughs> wow. Shanghai really isn't the end of the story. It's just the beginning. Well, Harry, I would love to do a second interview. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your history. No, thank you. Oh, Laura, uh, could you please see Rose out? Sure thing, Miss Abraham. It was nice meeting you, Rose. You too, Laura. I will be coming back next week to learn more. Apparently, Mrs. Abraham was quite the driver. Oh yes, you have learned the history of the singer of Shanghai, but just you wait for the Cutlass of Cleveland. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. The Singer of Shanghai was written and performed by students of the Arts and Entertainment Administration Program at Valparaiso University under the direction of Professors Carrie Ann Innes and Kevin Ostoyich. Thank you for listening.